Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's talk about a few more examples of homomorphisms. So we saw a few examples already. So here's uh, an example with the ring R being the group algebra. Okay. So recall that uh, the group algebra of a finite group or the group ring of a finite group over a field K is, well, what was it as a vector space? it had uh, elements which look like 1 sub g. So, these were the basis elements as g runs over the, the group g. So, recall here I am taking g to be a finite group. So, these form a basis of this space thought of as a vector space over k. But uh, what is interesting here really is the ring structure. So, we take 1 g multiplied by 1 h we said is 1 g h. Okay. So, look back on, on the lectures on the group ring and so on to recall the definition and uh, let us do a specific case. Let us take G to be the group S3, the symmetric group and uh, K to be any field. So, R is K of S3 this case. So, K is just any field here. So, uh, recall we had talked about a certain module for this group ring. Uh, what was that? The module M was as an underlying abelian group, it was just a space K3 comprising column vectors x1, x2, x3, where xi's come from K. Okay, And so that is the underlying uh, additive structure that is the abelian group. In fact, it is also a vector space, but that is at the moment we think of it as, a, as an abelian group and the action or the, the scalar multiplication by these basis elements 1 sigma we had said is given by the following formula. We can make uh, this into so uh, recall m. So, recall the following that m is uh, r module and via the following definition that the the elements of uh, the basis elements 1 sigmas they act on this as follows it maps it to a permutation of the three coordinates and we had said you need to use sigma inverses there okay and this is for all sigma in s3 okay so again look back on that lecture uh, to recall how this became an R module and so on. It is a left R module. Now, what we are going to do is to define a homomorphism of this space to itself. Okay, So, let me take this space, this module K3 and let me define for you a homomorphism of K3 to itself. Okay, and the, the, the map is the following. Look at x1, x2, x3, the uh, vector map to x1 plus x2 plus x3 in each of the three coordinates. So, it just sums the three coordinates and places that value in each of them. Okay. So, I claim that this map is actually a homomorphism. Okay. So, let us check this. So, claim f is uh, R homomorphism where R is the group ring. Okay, let us prove it. Uh, what do we need to do? We need to check that this is uh, it satisfies the two axioms. So, the additivity is easy. It is just uh, you know I mean, easy to check. If I take a sum of two vectors, then the, the answer will be again a sum. So, this is straightforward. I will leave it for you to check easy. But the key property we need to check really is the, the compatibility under scalar multiplication that I can pull the R out for all x in K3. 
Okay, uh, why is this possible? Well, let us take R to be these special elements, these basis elements 1 sub sigma and let us check it for those. Okay. It turns out it is enough to check for those elements. So, let us check for R equals 1 sigma. So, on the one hand I have f of 1 sigma acting on x. So, my question is this, is this the same as 1 sigma acting on fx? Okay, so, I need to compute both sides and check that they are actually equal. So, let us do that. So, let us first compute the left hand side of this, this uh, equation. So, f of 1 sigma x. So, what is this? Well, first I need to, to operate 1 sigma on x okay? and recall what 1 sigma does. So, here is the action of 1 sigma. When 1 sigma acts on x1, x2, x3, it just permutes the 3 coordinates x1, x2, x3 in some way according to sigma. Okay, it's it's still the same three guys, but they occur in some other order. Okay, but uh, observe that when I apply f to that answer, what is f doing? F is just summing up the three coordinates and giving me the total. Now, if I permute the three coordinates and then I sum them up, well, that's the same as the sum is the same as the the sum which I get uh, without permuting the coordinates. Right? It's the same answer anyway. So the left hand side is well, it is x sigma inverse 1 plus x sigma inverse 2 plus x sigma inverse 3 in each component, but that is the same as just saying it is the sum x1, x2, x3. Well, I let me just say multiplied by the vector 1, 1, 1, that is the same as this function f. Okay, so, it is it's I can compute it like this and now observe that uh, what about the right hand side. So, okay, I have computed the left hand side. The right hand side is I am supposed to take 1 sigma and I am supposed to act it on the vector x1 plus x2 plus x3 in each component, x1 plus x2 plus x3 okay, in each component. Now, what does 1 sigma do to this vector? Well, it again permutes the 3, three uh, components, but all 3 are equal to each other. So, when I permute the 3, I do not get anything new, I just get the same, same answer again. Okay, So, observe because the three components are the same, it just gives me the same answer once more. It is just x1 plus x2 plus x3 on each component. Okay, And so, that is exactly equal to the left hand side. Okay, Observe the left hand side was also the same thing. Okay, So, we have checked it for things of the form 1 sigma and uh, again I leave it as an exercise for you to check that it is true more generally if I take my ring element to be sort of the more general form. A linear combination. So, this is our all sigma in S3, uh, C sigmas are all field elements. Okay, recall that is a typical uh, element of my group algebra or group ring and you know check that the same check for such ring elements as well, the most general ring elements that the, the left hand side and right hand side will actually be equal. Okay, okay so that is the first example for uh, this lecture, uh, a homomorphism of a module over a group ring. Okay, now, here is a, a second example, let us look at another non-abelian group, the group of n cross, uh, I am sorry, a non-abelian ring, the ring of n cross n matrices over a field K. So, let n be at least 2, uh, K is any field. So, this is the matrix ring. and. Uh, uh, recall again from one of our last lectures that we constructed a module for this ring and the module was just again k to the n which is all column vectors of size n and uh, what was the action which is sort of the most obvious one. How does the ring r act on uh, vectors from k to the n? So, if I take an element of r, so in this case elements of r are nothing but matrices. So, if I take a a in M and K and V in V, then how do I scalar multiply V with A? Well, the answer is you just multiply that matrix with that vector, it will again give you a column vector, that is the answer. Okay? So, this is this is I am just recalling for you the, the scalar multiplication on this module V okay, by elements of R. So, again uh, V is an R module. So, again look back on the, the previous lectures to, to recall precisely how this became a module and so on. But for now, 
uh, I'm interested in trying to figure out what homomorphisms look like. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to understand if f from v to v is uh, R homomorphism. Okay, uh, then what can I say about f? What does that tell me about f? Okay, in other words, can I somehow characterize all homomorphisms uh, from this module to itself? Okay. Okay, so let's again uh, uh, see what the consequences of this. Uh, being a homomorphism would be. So, observe for a start that I can do the following. Let me take A. So, so what is uh, what is a homomorphism? Let us again recall its two properties f of x plus y uh, equals f x plus f y f x plus f y for all x y in V and f of property 2 R f x for all x in my ring which in this case is m and k. So, let me try to understand uh, what are all the various um, consequences of these two definitions. So, in particular let me start with this axiom 2 and uh, put a, take a special case let me take my r ring element to be the identity matrix okay, or more generally let me take it to be lambda identity where lambda is, a, is an element of the k and i v just denotes the the identity matrix ok. So, lambda times identity is the scalar diagonal matrix with all lambdas along the diagonal. So, suppose I take this particular ring element and see what uh, it implies. So, I have f of r x ok should be r f x. Now, what is f of r x? Well, f of r x by definition is I have to act lambda times identity on x. So, this is f of the matrix lambda times identity multiplied with the, the vector x. So, recall x now is a column vector here. Okay. The right hand side is well again I have to multiply the lambda identity with the column vector f x. Okay. So, what does that mean? Well, uh, this guy here is just uh, if I multiply identity with x I get back x. So, this is just f of the column vector x multiplied by the scalar lambda. And the right hand side is again identity times f x will just give me f x again. So, this is nothing but the scalar lambda times f x. Okay. So, what do I conclude? Well, for these special matrices R, the scalar matrices, I conclude that f of lambda x must give me the same answer as lambda f x. Okay. And this should be true for all scalars lambda from the, the base field k. Okay, and this should sort of uh, remind you of something that we we did last time for another example. So, we now look at the additivity property that we have that was from the first axiom together with this special uh, property we have concluded and what do these two things tell us? It tells us that if you think of V only as a vector space over K then f is a linear transformation. So, these two properties tell you that f is nothing but a linear operator on v ok thought of as a vector space. So, let me say let me call it k linear operator I am only thinking of it as a k vector space ok. So, first I have concluded it is a linear operator ok good, but again I have to use the full force of my hypothesis. I know that f of r x is r f x for all r's for all matrices thus far I have only used r equals scalar matrices to make my first conclusion ok. So, let us let us uh, do it a little bit more generally uh, let us use all r. So, first before that observe f is a linear transformation. So, what does a, a linear transformation or linear operator mean? So, observe first note f is a linear operator on the space of column vectors just means that f is given by multiplication by some matrix ok. So, let us call it uh, the matrix uh, P maybe ok. If you wish this is just the matrix of this linear operator with respect to the uh, standard basis of k n ok. So, any any linear operator always has a matrix 
and in this case I take the standard basis I compute the matrix of f with respect to the standard basis then of course the f evaluated on x is nothing but the matrix of f multiplied by the column vector x okay so any linear operator is nothing but multiplication by a matrix p now the question is what are the possible values of p right if I tell you what p is I know what f is so let me try and figure out if f is a homomorphism of r modules what does it tell me about this matrix p okay so now let us use the full force of the hypothesis uh, f of r x is r f x this is known ring m and k okay which means what so let me take uh, let me instead of r let me call it a okay so it is maybe better notation because psychologically I think of it as a matrix so f of a x should be a acting on f of x for all matrices a in m and k now what does this mean I have just told you what f is right f is just multiplication by p so this means in particular that if I take a x and I multiply it by p it should give me the same answer as a times p x for all a in m and k and for all column vectors x in k power n okay now what does that mean well it is saying that the the matrix p a and the matrix a p okay they give me the same answer when I multiply it by x for all x in k n okay this means in particular that the matrix p a has to be the same as the matrix a p right when I multiply it by every vector I get the same answer that means those two matrices are actually equal one way of seeing it is by multiplying it by the the standard basis vectors okay that give you each column of the product okay so I have concluded that p must commute with this matrix a but it must commute with a for every a in m and k in other words this matrix p is extremely special it commutes with every matrix so this belongs to what is called the center of this ring okay the center of a ring is just a set of elements of the ring which commute with all elements of the ring okay so I conclude that this matrix P must actually belong to the center of this ring okay and here is a, a, a little fact which maybe we will prove during one of the tutorials is that the center of the ring of matrices in other words the set of matrices which commute with all matrices is nothing but the scalar matrices these are the only ones which commute with all matrices okay set of all lambda and k okay so what this means is that this matrix p is actually a scalar matrix so what is that what is this i mean for the moment accept this as a fact so what conclusion do we make we conclude then that uh, uh, the the matrix p therefore must look like some scalar matrix therefore in particular this homomorphism f which looks like multiplication by p is just nothing but lambda times i v x so this is just f of x this homomorphism is just this very simple trivial homomorphism which is scaling by lambda okay so what we concluded is that the only homomorphisms from k n to k n are the scaling homomorphisms okay the maps which send uh, a vector x to some multiple of x okay and that multiple lambda is of course some fixed so for some fixed lambda for uh, lambda in k so if i choose different lambdas of course i get different scaling operators okay so those are exactly the set of all homomorphisms so we have made the following conclusions the set of all f from kn to kn such that f is uh, r linear or is a homomorphism homomorphism of m and k modules so i want to think of this as a kn as an m and k module the set of all homomorphisms is just the set of all scaling maps so this is just a set of all um, so maybe we should call this a scaling map something so i fix a lambda so maybe i'll call this f sub lambda the scaling by lambda map so this is just a set of all f sub lambda where lambda ranges over all elements of k it's exactly the set of scaling scaling map maps okay so that was a, a second example of what homomorphisms look like 
for this particular module over the matrix ring. Okay, now here is another uh, interesting example, slightly more general, which is that suppose R is any ring. And recall that I can think of R as a module over itself, R is a module over itself uh, with respect to this left multiplication action. So, how does a ring element, what is the scalar multiplication on x? It just multiplies Rx. Okay, so, this is the scalar multiplication operation. So, this is the scalar multiplication. Okay, and addition is of course, the usual addition on the ring. Now, uh, let us ask when you think of R as a module over itself in this manner, what are homomorphisms from R to R? So, I want to know if F is a homomorphism, then what can I conclude about F? What sorts of possibilities are there? So, let us again plug into the uh, definition A homomorphism means F of x plus y is F x plus F y for all x y in R property 2 says f of r x is r f x x and r. Okay. Now, again like we did before, so let us use the second property that is the one which usually gives us something interesting and non-trivial. So, let me take in this case, let me just take x to be the identity element of the, the ring. Okay. So, take x to just be the element 1 of the ring R and now let us see what I get from that. So, I get f of R scalar multiplying 1 should just be R times f of 1 okay? and this should be true for all ring elements R and R. I fixed x to be 1 here. Now, what does this mean? Well, this just means the left hand side is f of R, the right hand side is R times the element f of 1. So, this is what I conclude. I have actually figured out what value my f has on the ring element r. The value is just r times this element f of 1. Okay? So, f of 1 is some particular element of my, uh, my ring here. So, let us call f of 1 as something. So, let a be the element f of 1. So, we will just give this a name. Let us call it a. So, then observe that this homomorphism f of r is just this following map which is R mapping to R times A. Okay? So, this is sometimes what is called the right multiplication by A. This is just the map which is right multiplication by the element A. Okay? So, the, the, the beautiful thing here is that the homomorphisms from R to R, when you think of R as a left module over itself. So, remember this is, I am thinking of it as a left module over itself. Uh, via the scalar multiplication, then the homomorphisms from R to R turn out to be right multiplication maps. Okay? It is all of this form, where each element is, is multiplied on the right by some ring element. Whereas, uh, if you, you know, tried the same thing where, so I'll let me leave this as a little exercise for you. Recall, I can also think of R as a right module over itself, as a right R module via the following thing, if I take a ring element x and I think of right action of r, this is just multiplying on the right. So, this is a scalar multiplication now for all x in r, for all r in Okay, When I multiply the element x by r, the scalar multiply, the answer is just x multiplied by r on the right. Okay, This makes r into a right r module, the addition is just still the usual addition. Then, uh, what do homomorphisms look like? Then f from r to r homomorphisms uh, are exactly of the following kind. It just takes a ring element f of r and multiplies on the left by some element a of the ring. f of r is this for some fixed element a in the ring r. Okay? So, this is the left multiplication by a map. Okay. So, when you think of R as a left module over itself, the homomorphisms turn out to be the right multiplication maps and when you think of it as a right module over itself, the homomorphisms turn out to be left multiplication maps. Okay. And this is, a, this is an interesting uh, 
uh, structure that comes up here and that's something that we will take up again later on. Okay.